Hello and welcome to another Woodshop Podcast with Mike Coffey of Coffee Custom Builds, Daniel Dunlap of Daniel Dunlap Woodworks, and Peter Kapar of Petrie's Workshop. You can find us all as well as the podcast on Instagram and YouTube. Welcome, welcome to episode 138 of Another Woodshop Podcast, where this week we are joined by the undisputed king of unnecessary walnut, a full-time furniture maker, content creator, and undoubtedly one of the nicest and most knowledgeable people in the community, including my local community, because we're neighbors. He's the coolest cat Woo! of the three cats in his shop. Keith Magic <laughs> Johnson is here. Wow, thank you. <laughs> Pete, that's Pete was able to get the Magic Johnson thing in there. That's great. Good job, yeah, Pete. Ready. That's good. Pete's such a I was man. hoping. I was hoping he did. Like, like Pete said, Keith Magic Johnson is here with us. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I, we won't say it again. It's, no relation. It's, it's lowbrow humor. No, uh, <laughs> big, th- big thanks to Keith for joining us. Big thanks to our patrons for supporting the show. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. You guys are really keeping this thing going. Uh, certainly not Dan, Pete, and I. We're nope. frankly a mess. We're only doing uh, anyway, this for you. But, yeah, we, <laughs> we hate this show. We hate each other. <laughs> None of us like woodworking anymore. It's a real bad situation. This is but so 2020. <laughs> I'm gonna 2023. I'm starting knitting. <laughs> yeah. Is that your resolution? You're gonna That's roll into resolution. the knitting community. <laughs> <laughs> knitting content probably does better than woodworking. Probably. Yeah. Actually, woodworking is a sub niche to knitting. Uh, everyone knows that stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, Keith, thanks Walnut for joining us. Yarn. It's always good talking to you. Right on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, for sure, for sure. We, uh, you know, if anyone doesn't know who Keith is, that's ridiculous because it's Keith. Oh, Dan actually doesn't know who Keith. Dan is. doesn't know. We'll go I into more of that. You. You'll start to learn Let's a keep bit it more that about that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, Dan's from it's a faraway that, country uh, guys... called Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it's such a strange uh, place. <laughs> it really is. Keith, the... Keith, take a few minutes and tell us a little bit about who Keith is. Give us the. Uh, Five, the quick five minute elevator pitch on Keith Johnson. That's a long it? elevator. Good God. Five minutes. <laughs> We're going. It's the 2000th floor. Talk, monkey. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> I know we, we know you don't have a lot of experience with podcasting. So mm. we're just going to ease you okay, into you're gonna, Yeah, you're going to have to needle me. We're holding your hand me. here. Yeah, this is where you speak. Wow. So woodworking, <laughs> I mean, uh, started first woodworking class, eighth grade. How many ever years ago that was and just kind of built 11. from there learning learning on my own books magazines norm abram like everybody else uh there wasn't youtube back then i did not go to school for it or anything like that uh, i worked for a contractor kind of during summer breaks and then my uncle was a contractor i worked for him a little bit and then just kind of gradually grew my tool arsenal learning as much as i could building when i could and it has taken me up to this point where i went full-time furniture making two Two years ago. Yeah. So that's where I am. And content creation. Obviously, we started posting on Instagram four or five years ago and started growing an audience there and YouTube as well. So luckily, I was able to make the transition from a regular day job to this. Uh, without those social media platforms, I never would have been able to do it. I don't Transitions know. are tough. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a, <laughs> the operations quite extensive. <laughs> It's costly. Right. It's it so much money. Yeah. Uh, but hey, you're here now. Uh, yeah, I mean, I made it this you far. I'm at, the, this far right. I'm at the top now. And you pretty much hit YouTube right out of the gate, too. Yeah, a few, I guess, I, I don't even know how many years ago it was. Yeah, the first I definitely two didn't check, I, but your first video was out five years ago. Wow. And I remember after my third video, and it took me 40 hours to edit, I'm like, I'm oh, never God. doing this again, ever. <laughs> And it took it really took all my strength to do another one, and then I'm glad I did. Keith, I'm gonna lay a sucks, I'm gonna lay a pro tip on you right now, right here. Please, this hang is on, what let you me came get my for. pen. I'll yes. write this down. Yep, go ahead. Hire an editor. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. He might know a guy. I yes. do, and I actually, it's funny you mention that because I had Nikki edit my last video. Oh dang it! And this time i started editing my next video and I, and i'm already in the mode of like i don't want to edit anymore oh <laughs> so if he edited it, he's got a nice k amount of views on that one 69. yeah k. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i was like That's what, what does I that mean? For. <laughs> oh man it's listen it's hard to let go 
of things like that because a lot of my videos i try to be more detail oriented and show people more rather than an overview of things and when you hand that off to an editor they don't really know what you're going after now nick knows me knows my content knows woodworking so it's very helpful but if i were to hand it over to someone who just does basic editing and not in our niche or niche It'd be a little difficult. I Nietzsche. think it would take like a Nietzsche. few. Yes, that's right. It's French. It would take a few videos to get for them to get what I'm looking for. And I just, eh, eh, and you know, if, if I get huge and I'm like trying to pump out a video a week, then if I maybe. get huge, okay. Well, Keith, listen, I can't huge build fast book. enough. I thank you. Yeah. You're very kind. I can't build fast enough to put out. My wife also thinks enough. I'm huge though. So take that for what it's worth. She's got small hands. Beautiful. Yes. Thank you. This guy gets oh, it. This is the podcast, guys. Uh, Keith, thanks for that. Let's <laughs> end on a high. Yeah. yeah right. Uh, That's peaking I'm early. out. <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. Costanza, your way out of here. <laughs> uh, I'm out, people. Uh, Coco. Uh, <laughs> next. Uh, that was uh how i mean how overall how was that transition from i mean i know your situation is was was different i mean you you're you were mm. essentially laid off right i mean you were right. laid off from your, your day job which is frightening for any i mean anyone where they have a day job i mean okay i guess the question i should start with were you thinking about making the jump to full-time content woodworking before that happened no no not at all so that because, was like and i'll this tell you was why thrust was... upon you There was no reason to. I mean, I had a good job. I had 401k. I had benefits. And, you know, I had that security as secure as you can get with a day job. And then I had woodworking on the side, which was extra money. It was fun. And it kind of, you know, any money I would make from commissions would support my tool habit. It was just a good situation. And, (laughs) yeah, getting – I always – I did tell myself if I ever get laid off, I'm going to try this full time and see what happens because I'm at that age where, like, running out of time here. So – if I don't do it now, I'm not going to, I'm not a person who likes change. I'm very, I'm not a grab of life by the balls kind of person. Right. And just go You're, for it. I, I yeah. need all things. Stability is good. Yeah. And even once all things are in place, I still have a hard time jumping. You need all your morsels in a row. If you want. Aww, yeah. yeah, it's very yeah. true. <laughs> all two of them. <laughs> well, that kind of answers my question. Cause I was going to ask you is like, are you, were you looking for a job and was like, Oh, this actually is kind of cool. I'm going to keep doing this. Or, but you said, if you ever got laid off, you were just going to go 100%. Yeah. Right. And you know, I was, I was fortunate enough that all those years of creating content on Instagram and YouTube that I could make that jump without that. And I'll tell you right now, if you, if I just had to make a living on building furniture alone and no content, I could not do it. No, that's tough. Yeah. I can't build fast enough and it's, I would have to bang out a piece of furniture. I can't design that fast enough. I can't build that. I can't deliver that fast enough. I just can't. Even as long as I've been doing this, I am a slow builder. I think if anybody's going to give me a run for my money on how slow one can build, I think it's going to be you. I mean, you, how how long did you spend building that little mud room for your sister? Right. I mean, that's Yeah. I mean, that took a year, but you can't count that. <laughs> you don't count that. This I was doing involved. other things at the same. There were a lot of delays, electrical, drywalling. Also, plumbing. his cats keep sleeping on top of the plants. So he I'm surprised he gets any work done as it is. They do slow me down. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Absolutely. They you have, reduce ever, my like, productivity by 17 percent. I, I did a study. <laughs> I did a study. Do you <laughs> yeah. ever like not turn on a certain tool or like, I'm not going to do it now because Jerry's in here? Do I have to admit this on the show in front of this I'll large studio point, audience? I do it. I sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm not going to run this machine right now. Binks is in here hanging out. Exactly I'll do it right. When if he, <laughs> someone's on the bench and I'm like, eh, I don't, you know, I don't want to move him to do something. I'll hand just, sand this whole thing. It's not, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> not a noise Love thing because nothing scares them, but it's a position issue. If they're napping somewhere and they're in my way, I'll do something else. They need their wow. sleep. Wow. Wow. Uh, I know. Admirable. Yeah, keep uh, sleeping on a domino. Word for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's about the nicest word I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to deny that it's insane and crazy and nuts, but. You're like you know. the woodworking version you. of a cat lady. I really like am. It. He is. Yeah. 
it, but, but you've made it, it work for you. you figured it out you've taken the con i mean so you you were you put in the position you weren't planning on being in which is different than most <clears throat> people in this situation i think a lot of people the, i mean we're going to get a question about it tonight about how what should i have ready before i jump into doing this thing full-time that i want to do you know for you you didn't want to do it full-time but right. you luckily were able to find a way to harness it and turn it into something full-time so i kind of think what my point is that it goes to show that you know, you can jump from a stable job into this situation and make a living at it. You can. Mm -hmm. Is it a good idea to do that? <laughs> Probably not a great idea because <laughs> making furniture for a living, it's just there's not a lot of money in it. It's really not yeah. like it's not a luxurious lifestyle. People want tables for like 800 bucks <clears throat> with five chairs and stuff. And it's just like, yeah, you have to like really find a specific niche of people. You have to get into a specific demographics where they're actually paying money for stuff. It's just really tough. I mean, and then, you know, at the end of the day, like to make any money in a furniture shop, you have to crank out a lot of products or a lot of pieces all the time. That's the only way to make real money. Right. So, and, you know, um, if you have a steady line of products, um, but they get it, like, I don't want to be in production. I want every piece right. I do to be like the unique the next time. Otherwise I get really right. bored really fast. Yeah. So yeah, for sure. I need that change of pace, but that slows you down. Then you can't develop processes to make you go faster and jigs that you always right. have. Like every time you build something, it's for the first time and you're figuring it all out. Every, like yep. I say, every, every I do build is a that. prototype. Everyone's a prototype because I've never done it before. I take all the things I know from other builds, but I still encounter problems. I still, right. You're still using problems. the sum of all your knowledge, but it's yeah. a different build every time. So there's things you just have, can't, you've never different dealt problems with before, every mean. time. Yeah. Different problems. If you're not, unless you're building the, it, the exact same way, even then when you're building the exact, exact same way, unless it's like an actual factory, you're still kind of refining as you go, mm. but yeah, it, it does get boring when you build the same thing over and over again. I mean, it just, it just does. It sucks. Uh, and yeah, it's, it saps painful. the life out of the process and it saps the life. Out. It's just tough. So, um, I don't know. It's just really hard. Some like, guys like it. Like my buddy Jeff Fader is a knife maker. Tremendous, amazing knife maker. He loves that tediousness of like sanding. He's got like a 50 knives all in clamps with the scales on there. And then he's got to hand sand each one. He like he loves that production mode. I hate it. Like I can't walk up two flights of stairs without my brain like wanting to skip a step. Like I can't do that many of the same thing in a row or I lose interest quickly max we can do six right. in a row so like right. matt, <laughs> matt so matt works matt works for me we have this i have this contract with the retailer we do shelves every month we do between 110 and 200 <laughs> shelves a month for room and board um i don't have anything to do with that project because frankly i'd kill myself like i'd off yeah. myself if i had to do that part. but my but matt matt spearheads that whole project matt does all of it and matt loves it it's repetitive matt loves it matt loves that stuff i could not do it he does everything he literally I put the order together. That's it. That's all I do. Oh, and I, I spray some of the finish sometimes, but he, he, he loads everything on the CNC, cuts out all the parts in the CNC, sands all the pieces, you know, assembles everything, has everything ready to go. He does all that. And he loves it every month because he knows that he has a job every month and it's consistent. And he does the same thing. So he loves that stuff that, that to some people great. love that. Yep. Yeah. Some people love it. And it's, it's just, I can't do, I can't do it. So I mean, that's, you're thankful you have people like that. Right. And that <laughs> otherwise you exist, wouldn't be able so, to do those types of jobs. Right. I wouldn't be able to, do the projects that I do love. Like we're, you know, I only really work on the projects that are not the same every time, really. I mean, that's, that's how I've kind of structured my business is that I have parts of my business that do production so that we can have constant money coming in so that I can afford to do the projects I actually want to do. That's like how I structured my business. And then mm -hmm. the conversation goes into, into content. Like obviously you crushed it on Instagram when you started hitting Instagram. I mean, your numbers were, I mean, you're, you're the, you're the king of like the small, what's the small, like the small format video almost. I mean, you're just, you're so good at it. Um, not to like, you're, your horn, but we're killing like, it over there doing that before reels were a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was if, <clears throat> anyway, for real, for reels. It was magic. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, it really, it, okay. Pete. Is that uh, enough? I, oh, wait. Here's I, I the see Jerry. Cat visit. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, uh, wait, is that Lola? That's, That's uh, the cat, That's Jerry? obviously. Okay. Well, it's one of them. That's a they don't all, all look right, the same, in, Dan. Go in your hole. You <laughs> okay. This got Oop. weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna float around. Sure, boy, I got really tail. hot all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Jerry. There's a question for you later. <sighs> oh yeah. Well, I'm not gonna read that one. It's very inappropriate. Uh, inappropriate. <laughs> it just says morsels. So <laughs> watch your mouth. We're not trying to plug Keith's uh 
uh, bits and bits codes over here. All right. Dan, Let's, uh, keep... uh, Speaking of morsels, I have a wait, very Dan, important 15 question. minutes, 15 seconds in. Can you just edit in a bleep when he says the word morsels and then do one mm. right when I said that word? <laughs> Can, can no, I, uh, let me much. mention a thing about beeps because I, I'm sure Mike, you're, you know, you're relatively new on YouTube, so you're going to be mm -hmm. getting comments. I, I, I don't get a lot of um, trolls over there, but I do get some. And I got one tonight, in fact, where this guy wrote two para three paragraphs. He's like, basically, he didn't understand why I beep out curse words in my videos it disturbs his dog and it sends him like running into the other room like i don't get the logic are you trying to protect your language from kids i'm like it was this whole thing he's like i can't subscribe i love your videos but i can't subscribe because you beep That's out things. i just you i only replied beeping curse words is funny end of story it's right. just it does funny. make them funnier yeah that's it because everybody it knows what it. it is yes right or like when you beep like the smallest with... amount so yes. you can absolutely tell what it is. Oh, like, like <laughs> Petey? <laughs> yeah, Petey. Yeah, like Petey's bleep it good. after you say the word yeah. Petey USA. So good. <laughs> like you didn't try. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. That's the best. That's such a great yeah. example. <laughs> it's perfect. Petey USA is gold. That's a great. So, that's like so one dumb. of the only TikTok it. channels. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, no, I, I mean. Yeah, I mean your your perspective. Sorry to like keep going back to, it, but your perspective is different than most people's. I mean, a lot of people think that getting into content or getting into woodworking is something that they need to like do all these things for. Which it's true, you should do that. You should have all these plans in place, have some savings in line. Um, mm -hmm. It is, but you can, you know, you're the example of hey. Sometimes you find out that your job that you've been at for a long time is over and now you have to succeed. And I kind of like fear kind of pushes that, obviously the fear of failure, all those different things. They, they There's a lot to be said about the survival aspect of having to like pay your bills and all those things. You had to excel sure. at these things. I mean, there's, that adds a lot of element to your success, I think. And, um, you know, obviously you're doing well on the different platforms you're on and you have good commissions and you're making great products. So it's, all I'm saying is you're doing great, Keith. You're you're a huge Thank inspiration. You. And I just want to say, like, you know, you're you're a really important member of the community. Not to turn Thank this into you. like a big blowing your smoke up your butt, but you're you're a great guy and we're really glad you're on the show. It's so. a butt uh, worthy of smoke. Yeah. <laughs> well, to touch up on that uh, subject, like I, I went I'd to hang out butt. at Keith. Not <laughs> smoke that butt. <laughs> um Keith reached out to me. In the we only, by the way, we only found out we live near each other at Maker Camp. Of all, of all the times. Um, right. But when I went over there to pick up some, uh, what he had called trash walnut was like very nice pieces <laughs> that I can use. Uh, we, we, I went there just like, I don't want to bother you. I just want to like pick up whatever. We, Grab we your wood for and like go. three I mean, hours. <laughs> and one of the things that really resonated with me is because like, I've been, I've looked up to Keith for, for many years and you had very openly, very specifically told me that like, you have not figured this out. You don't understand some of it, a lot of it. You don't, get how some of it works some of it works these uh, some of it works some of it doesn't work like you are doing your thing and some things are working some are not and it it's not all like the perfectly laid out thing like this laid out plan you just you're doing what you think is working and you're constantly pivoting uh and you're figuring it out there's no like this is the way you have to do it you just kind of figure it out yeah there's like, no oh, wow, magic like, formula and yeah. it's different for everybody i feel like when people ask for I've gotten a few of these questions like, huh, I'm trying to start out a woodworking business. What should I do? I'm like, I am the absolute worst person to ask about business. Mike, you're an amazing businessman. I am not. I am horrible at like giving things away to customers and like um, lowering prices to get the job or uh, buying extra material I, or or buying extra things and then not using them. Like I just kind of throw stuff around. Like I am horrible at penny pinching. Like I could be making more money if I wasn't as free about these things as I am. So Lucy goosey is the word. That's yeah, the, that's I was thinking first. more like yeah. hippie, no, no. <laughs> hippie woodworker. Very loose. Purse. Very free. Yeah. Like instead of a buying a, a drum sander, he's just been coming over using yes, mine. I and I've, I've racked up a bill of like $1,500 at this point. In sandpaper. So, you know. <laughs> so it's and and also like I'm in a you know I'm in a smaller small ish shop, so I can't take on big projects normally. But luckily, I've not able, with that attitude. You know, I have a. 
<laughs> Dan's, he, he's got some less space than you, though. I, I'll say that. Um, so luckily, I have some friends locally who have you know bigger shops and who are very kind and let me use their space when I need it um, or actually build projects with me. So it doesn't limit me per se, but you know, I prefer just working in my own shop, but it's, it's difficult sometimes moving things around, <clears throat> trying to break down an eight by an eight by 10, eight by 10, four by eight sheet of plywood. Yeah. Eight by 10 would be really tough. Oh my God. Can you fit that in your trailer? <laughs> <laughs> With the right angles and math. Yeah. 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 So you drive around the neighborhood. and pulleys. I can make that happen. It fits anytime. in my trailer if you angle it right. <laughs> <laughs> so it all comes to, like I I hate giving business advice for how to like because I don't number one I don't know where you live I don't know your skills I don't know your market I don't know right I, it's anything so hard. there's so yeah. many variables that come into play here and even I live you know Pete now we live in like you know New Jersey is a pretty affluent area there's a lot of affluent towns um, but I feel like. Even these affluent towns, like they don't want to pay the money for this custom furniture. I always get pictures. Hey, I saw this on Restoration Hardware. Can you build it for the same price? No. And my initial response is give them the bird. And then, yeah, no problem. Because I, if it looks like a decent price, if I know it, that's where I normally base my commissions on. If it's going to make good content, then I'll build it. Yeah, but because you can like- get residual payments yes. residual payments yep. or evergreen payments well, it, or whatever it's you want to call it business model so yeah. i wouldn't say you're not a good businessman i think you know what's going to work in your content it's a subsidized so, I mean, build yeah I mean, yeah 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 but i feel like i could make more on things if i wasn't um i don't know i'm trying nice. i can't think of, a, of an example like on this one of these builds like i bought like 10 different types of leg levelers because i'm like i'm not sure which one's gonna work and then i just don't return them i just throw them in the drawer and maybe save them for later so it's like you know that was like 50 60 70 bucks and you know but all these things add up um in time but you got to have multiple streams of revenue everybody talks about this whether it's plans or um, <clears throat> affiliate links which by the way do absolute nothing for me i'm the right. worst affiliate linker there is mike i think kills I, it with them i i don't yeah. I, I don't know I, he just sends out nudes with all the qr codes for all the different companies and people down just, the shaft yeah, no. uh, <laughs> there's only one qr code <laughs> yeah it's one super small qr code. no it's yeah. uh no it, you have to i mean even as i mean I just think it's an old fashioned way to not have multiple streams of revenue for any business, really. I mean, you need sure. to figure out ways to make different ways of money on it. That's just how it is these days, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's, t- I mean, right now, <clears throat> it's weird now because I, I made the jump when it was like 2020, I don't know, July, whenever I made the jump full time. A year, like and, year and, and a half ago? ago. Yeah, a year and a half ago, I made the jump that to full time. Yeah. And like, I made the jump to full time and then I was like, okay, I'm going full time with the furniture business. Uh, I'm going to tr- get content in there as much as I can. And the content just kind of fell to the wayside because the business got so busy. And now I'm actually at the spot now where I'm like, okay, I can actually utilize my business to kind of partially fund my ability to get into content now, which is what has happened now. I've got Peter here. Uh, my cinematographer is in here. Yeah. Peter, <laughs> Peter, Kapar. no, P- Peter's here. And you know, Peter's very good at making videos. I mean, he makes really good videos. Mm-hmm. Um, now we just have to figure out how to do it to make where it works on YouTube. I mean, that's kind of what we're working on now. So um, fortunately, my business is, the, is in a position where I can do that. But, you know, that's not the position that everyone's in. It's I'm in a fortunate position and I recognize that. So um, right. and honestly, it's, it's working because scary. you're con- you're now consistently putting out videos just like Dan. Right got a video there's a video yep. coming out i'm not consistent every week or putting so. out videos so. <laughs> you guys have both put out more videos in the last month than you have the last six months or more yeah, that's true so so it, that helps it's volume unfortunately it is volume you know it's not well i, I think that it's just like on instagram i mean the algorithm needs something to rate you by i mean there's yeah. just some videos that hit and are viral um but the whatever platform you're on that algorithm needs to be able to and you need to feed it have input to have mm-hmm. output I mean, that's just the bottom yeah. line. I mean, it's just the bottom line. You need to be able to put videos out on YouTube. If you want eggs from that happen. goose, you got to feed the bear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. <laughs> man, and Nebraska's a weird place, man. <laughs> I'm not really uh, sure I know what you mean. <laughs> I don't, I'm, I don't think totally you're allowed to say that damn. anymore. Uh, <laughs> no, I, it's just it's just tough. You go, all these things are tough. Nothing's 
easy. I mean, none of it's easy. You have to find your way. And that's what you were saying earlier that Pete it was saying that Keith, you were saying that you don't really know, but no one knows anyone who says that no. they know, I think is a liar. Like they are lying and trying to take your money. Like, especially with algorithm stuff. I feel like they're trying to take your money because no one actually knows. I mean, as so. soon as you think you figured it out, it's, yeah, it's, it's on to something else. They zag. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's annoying. So, I mean, I mean you can post. Is, I, I mean, and that's the problem. You get married to something like, oh, this video is going to kill. I love it. It's so good. And it's a complete bomb. And then another one that's just kind of a throwaway and it explodes. And you kind of, <laughs> you got to take the good with the bad. It, yeah. I guess. It's funny. I'm doing a, I'm doing a, the top four because I only started like two days ago, top four reels of the year. And my top reel this year is only five seconds long. It is the dumbest thing. <laughs> and it got like 9 million views. Oh, it's whoo. ridiculous. Yeah. It, it was just me tapping a, a call it on my router and the CNC and a, a bit falling out and sticking into the wood. Oh, like, that was a good one. <laughs> oh, that was so nice. Yeah. My biggest reel is a bow tie, a bow tie being knocked in. Yeah. It's those don't dumb. usually do well. Bow ties, <laughs> junk. Well, and I feel like you're you have to, you're appealing to the lowest common denominator of people's, and it, it <clears throat> it's sad. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. <clears throat> it's just gotten and these whole, I mean, this whole Instagram real thing, where it's basically like a video jukebox now, and I can't, I I cannot find valuable content on my Instagram feed anymore. It's just everything is uh, like a skit or an act or a play yes. or oh, yeah. something. Yeah. And I, I, some of them are funny. I'm not going to lie. I haven't, I I haven't gotten into that yet. Them, I, can't, I, just, I can't bring myself to do yeah, it. It's not why I'm on the platform. I go to TikTok for content. Yeah. yeah I for do skits not and stuff. Yeah. For, yeah. I'm on like, a, like, I think that's tailored towards what I want to see. So a lot of it is like entrepreneur stuff. It's actually not a lot of woodworking. It's, it's making as a whole all kinds of artists and whatever but like it's not just like woodworking content that we're seeing on instagram because i love everyone and i'm making the same content too but that's working on instagram hey, you do what it's you got to do but it's not to what i want to consume right now you no know? yeah and uh, i go I, to tiktok to watch the skits and the and the dances and the booty shakes well, yeah, I, i'm on ig feeds. to watch very you know feeds. woodworking content and stuff like that i want to learn i want to see people's processes and then i go to facebook if i want to see a recipe from my great aunt margaret <laughs> Honestly, i get more more out of instagram stories a lot of times than yes. i do out of the content itself because yes. i'm seeing the people behind the, in the scenes. Reel again like what videos used to be i do miss that but that doesn't work that doesn't yeah whatever doesn't i don't notice. consume any instagram content anymore i cannot stand it anymore it's how could you it's like it's, I, it's, but your fans really but the fans like, <laughs> I don't consume any content. So my hard. next question it's was, are you guys, of... are you guys using that new notes feature in the Instagram oh, I'm so messages? Glad you brought that up. Oh. Why can't you turn that off? Why isn't it an option to turn that garbage off? I don't care that it's Merry Christmas, whatever. I've been using I just it. To, it's at the top yeah. of my, I, it's fine yeah. if you want to use it, but I want the option to turn it off because it's the yeah. first thing at the top and it throws me off and it distracts me. I think Spags, and that's, that's uh, what it is. It's it's all it's doing is m trying to force people to stay on the content on the platform longer. And you're yeah. You're, oh yeah, for sure. Are, for me, I don't even see that section anymore. Spags is like I, I, so they I had posts tape across my phone, and then, and then mm -hmm. when the content wasn't good enough to put on a post, they gave us stories. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, when yeah. the content wasn't good enough to put in stories, they gave us this stupid no. thing above messages. <laughs> that's right. I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that's a hundred percent what it yeah, is. That's the truth. I use it to pr uh, promote stuff like I've it's been promoting the podcast like is it is it Instagram trying to go after Twitter I think it's like, Instagram trying to be MySpace oh you're really throwing <laughs> it back there grandpa wow. your status updates status up well yeah I guess that was a thing it's basically a status I mean, that update. used to be a thing on Facebook too right oh yeah like, way yeah. back way back in the day when yeah. I was your age yeah yeah, yeah. you would have to so like hey, kids when I first started Facebook I think it was 2007 or six you so like your name would come up first and it, you would just like finish the sentence daniel dunlap is yeah going to the grocery store that's not know? what i was gonna say but okay uh, taking yeah. a poop <laughs> feeling something feeling something yeah, himself yeah. sadness yeah. sadness it's complicated <laughs> <laughs> it's... Jeez. Uh, geez. yeah so yeah content's just rough like it's just it's tough too because like 
um there's like no growth on instagram it feels like too and it's just like oh, dude yeah, i was stagnant. just talking about it's this today stagnant. like mm-hmm. I plateaued. I've been Plat- at 100. Plateau back down and in line. 104,000 followers for the last like two, three months. I can't get past it. It's yeah. up and down. You don't slowly a- grow there anymore. You grow in spikes, and then yeah, plateau. Based on a piece you of can't content. hit anything. Nothing. Nothing takes off. Everything's just kind of. Dan, how many followers right? would you think I've gained in a month? Not not negative. How many followers do you think I've gained in a month? Thousand. Thousands. Forty-two. <laughs> in I'm right there month. with you, man. I'm right there with you. It's I'm insane. at 104,980. Like... <laughs> I just can't get over the 104,000. You know, like when you hit above 100k, it just gives yeah. you the the yeah. thousands. Mm-hmm. Not not to brag a little bit, but like flex, it's been on the about. 104k for like <laughs> three months. Three months. I, honestly, uh, yeah, when people started it, seeing the negative days suddenly, like I don't know what they did. Oh. When people started seeing negatives, like oh, that exists. You could just go net. You could lose twenty seven <laughs> followers in a day. Okay, cool. That's when it started like really plateauing people. And I remember, I mean, I was at twenty four k for a year and a half, about twenty four to twenty five. Like I grew a thousand over a year and a half, and then spiked to forty four. I can't wait to see how many followers I lost today. I posted a story <laughs> about. Uh, well, I just posted a picture of me getting gas, and it was two twenty nine a gallon. Two twenty nine. In fairness, I had 40 cents off a gallon because of my grocery fuel points. Well, okay. I, I, obviously. Grocery okay. As one Menards does. Bucks. <laughs> Menards <laughs> Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, above the picture in the story, I said, thanks, Obama. So yeah. I can't wait to see him. I was going to say, uh, yeah. thank Joe Biden or something. Oh, no. No, no, no. I was uh, going for comedy. Stay but, woke you know. with Sleepy Joe. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> All right. Let's pivot into anyway, questions quickly. Uh, listeners. <laughs> oh, wait. No. That's not what's what we on do. my bench. Wait, we don't do that. We do Are what's we doing on what's bench? on a bench? This is going to be a long podcast. Yeah, we, this is, I can't find the button for that. It's gone. Oh, here it is. <laughs> everyone, everyone, here we go. I found it. <laughs> what's on my uh, bench? There it is. You know, <laughs> yes. Is thank God. Uh, Keith, what do you got going on this week? What are you working on? What's on your bench? I got a white oak vanity that's been on my, well, it's been on there for a couple of weeks, but it's a, it's an involved process um, because I need to build this thing basically modular so I can get it in the client's house and up the stairs and around the corner and in their bathroom. But it needs to look like a piece of furniture. So it's cabinetry that looks like furniture. And I am using every joinery method, uh, every joinery tool that I have. You got brad nail screws, pocket screws, lamello, and domino. Drill driver. Yeah. Domino yeah, and pocket hold together. Yes. Yeah, and I'm, I've combined all of them together into one joint as well. Right. You're just yeah. just jamming just, into wood with all these tools. Going super once. joint. Ah! <laughs> so what you want to do is I mean, put that's... a domino in and drive a 45 degree domino through it, and then glue it, and then put a lamello in it. And right. Then yeah. It. yeah. I mean, that's the play for the uh, YouTube kind of thumbnail. Is you know, like, I never understood the Clamex. You turn the Clamex and a domino comes domino. over and holds it in place. <laughs> I, Keith, I know we're doing what's on our bench, but Keith, could you yeah. explain to me how uh, a marshmallow does with joinery? I don't understand. A ma- <laughs> what do you mean? You uh, mean a lamello? It's oh. lamello, oh. not oh. la marshmallow. It's, it's not French. I thought it was like, like an natural... East Coast marshmallow. No, it's, it's like French an air gap, like a gasket. It's oh, a natural yeah. air gap. I'm going to be real honest, Dan. I had no All idea what the hell you were talking about. I had to, I I had to translate for Dan. It was. Thank I'm you. So thank you for saving me. I was like, what is happening? Yeah, it's just, it's a simple machine. Oh, just, no. Dan's Alzheimer's just kicking slot, in. And then when you bottom out, it goes. <laughs> and then it cuts in the deeper holes. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's I mean, I kind of describe what it does. The shouldered slots. Yeah. yeah oh, every yeah. time I hear the word lamello, I think marshmallows. I'm weirdo. Lamello. I like my hot chocolate with Lamello. It's French. <laughs> French marshmallows. Uh, so that's that's what's on my bench still. Nice. Nice. You making a video out of that? Yeah, two parter. So I was debating on this. Um, but because uh Celiche is kind of sponsoring the because they gave the drawer slides and the hinges and everything. So I want to do part one is the whole cabinet build by itself, and then part two is gonna be the drawers. Did you say Celiche? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, not sour. When you, was cook, when you no. cook fish with lemon juice? <laughs> yeah. I thought it was sabre. 
<laughs> Sabre. <laughs> and it's nice. By the way, it's it's Bloom, not Blum. For those oh, people, okay. right? Wow, no, making notes really, over here. Uh, no, really stop it. killing right. people's dreams over it's here. Illegal. I know. I still say Blum too. <laughs> yeah, but when you call the factory, thanks for calling. Thanks Blum. for calling Blum. Yeah. No, this is America. It's Blum. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, cool. Is that anything else going on? No. No. All right. Dan. Oh, Dan. Guys, hold on to your pants. You want me to do yours for you? Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think I'm going to say? Bow ties on Etsy. <laughs> Actually, no. Oh. Bow ties have taken a backseat to oh. zero oh, clearance inserts. inserts. Right. That's yes. why you bought the seventeen dollar miter saw today. <laughs> <laughs> it was on sale $100 you know, I didn't off. Push the subject, but I was questioning it heavily. Oh, me switching teams? It's I mean, switching that teams. That sounded weird. You right. polish a turd, it's still a turd. No, that sounded right. <laughs> no, this jives. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so zero clearance inserts are are ridiculous right now. So I'm trying to uh offer more brands and more models and stuff. So in an effort to do so, instead of re reaching out to my followers on IG, like I did in the beginning of this whole mess, um, I thought it'd just be easier to get a saw for market research and bring it back to my shop and measure it and fit it and do all that stuff right in my shop. It. Instead of asking my followers to send me an insert from their saw, send it back to them with an insert that I cut, hope that it fits perfectly. If it doesn't, they, they got to report back to me and I got to make adjustments and send them a new one. You know What's what I'm saying? about that? Oh, hmm. you know, nothing. Nothing. You got a pirate ship. <clears throat> so. UPS, pirate ship, what's that? For you. What's pirate ship? <laughs> um, oh, you know. Okay. Yeah, so I bought the uh, I bought the rigid R forty two twenty two from Home Depot today. It was a hundred dollars off, and I was like, "Well, this is a great place to start. Let's do it." So you got it for nineteen dollars. Nineteen dollars. This Menards bucks. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't take the Menards rebates. The <laughs> oh. um, oh, crazy. So yeah, that's my plan. I'm gonna I'm gonna start buying up all the saws, and uh, I'm either gonna try to return them or sell them on the Facebook Marketplace, or maybe just do a giveaway, depending on how cheap the giveaway saw would is. Be pretty cool. It would be really, you but the shipping would do. be yeah, brutal. Good luck shipping that. Yeah, <laughs> this is what you do. Well, it, shipping's it gonna be, be like fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, so I bought this Delta <laughs> Unisaw just so I can get the, <laughs> the insert right. <laughs> Giving it away. Fifty-year-old Delta Unisaw. <laughs> Can't you just buy the insert from Rigid directly and then use that as the template? You can, but they're slopping it. I want it to be a perfect oh, okay. fit. Understood. You know what I mean? A zero clearance oh, Dan, fit. Dan, wouldn't moves. I admire your commitment to no it's, slop. It's no in slop. a piece that small. It's not going to move that much. Hashtag no slop. I've done the research, buddy. <laughs> no slop Saturdays? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Sunday, bro. Oh, okay. No slop Sunday. And what do you make these out of, Dan? Hardwood. I make them out okay. of walnut, cherry. But oh, you don't put maple. adjustable screws in the side? No, that's that's one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, have the saw itself so I can measure the actual thickness so that it just sits in there perfectly. And you don't Now, for those of it. us who don't know, measure means what? <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. Did Pete put you up to that? Did I, Pete I, put no, you I did not. That? No, it's a Jersey <laughs> thing, though. You, you sound you real funny not. to us. <laughs> All right. You basically uh, said bagel. <laughs> oh my oh my god <laughs> measure <laughs> that's better. measure i can't oh, i can't say it well, it say sounds it weird to me way, measure yeah. the exotic <laughs> say it like your french girls yes. oh my it's god. funny <laughs> Measure me topic. like one of your french girls <laughs> i never thought i had an accent until i i started this podcast with these two yahoos <laughs> Well, you really don't. There's just, a, I mean, it's the same with us. Like, there's a few words that people immediately. You do know I add and... subtitles when you talk on the YouTube videos, right? <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. Um, <laughs> and then just like la about. last okay. in Nebraska. And then the <laughs> so, okay, continuing on, uh, inserts, yada yada. Uh, I've also been working on that cherry bed i don't know if i mentioned that in the past weeks my memory is bad i don't know if you guys know this or not i'm old uh so i've been working on the cherry bed it's almost done we're actually making a two or three part video on that as well so uh oh by the way i have a youtube channel as well hi hi not as popular uh, as these two below me 
uh, Mike and Keith, but I have what? one. Your channel's as big as mine. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, you got a few more followers or subscribers or whatever it's called over there. Um, likes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to b- build that bed, and uh, it was supposed to be done the week before Christmas, and here we are. And then I need to ship it off to somewhere on the East Coast. I can't remember exactly where I need to. Are you taking business from me? Son of a bitch. Yeah, what the hell? Hey, you better believe it, bro. This is, this is uh, cutthroat bro, world of woodworking. I would have given them free shipping. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Keep that I'm delivering it free. And the great Daniel Dunlap is. <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyways, uh, that's basically been my week since we did do a podcast last week, even though uh, we didn't tell you about it. So if. If you're listening to this now and you didn't realize we had a podcast last week, we did. So go listen to that, please. I'm begging you. Anyways, (laughs) uh, Mike, what did you do this past Uh, week? You know, we've been kind of just getting stuff like organized in the shop. It's been really nice. We have we have a bunch of jobs, but it's not like crazy like it's been for the last like six months. So. Um, I've been able to catch up on smaller projects, get stuff done. I had my, uh, installer, the guy who does all my installs, Brian, he came and did, um, he installed a door <clears throat> in the back of my shop. So we have a door that's matched up with oh, the other door to my nice. other shop. So now I can just do a walkthrough, which is really Are you, doing nice. a breeze you should build a tunnel. Yes. Thank yeah. you. A breeze yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to build an arch. I don't think we'll do walls because we still want to be able to get out of there but i'm, I'm gonna do an archway I, i've got some extra i've got all this redwood in for this uh i'm gonna build a timber frame you guys know, uh, i have an idea uh, hear me out hear Justin me out Dietrich. yeah yeah trust yeah. it's great go ahead dan i want to hear your idea you have a cnc build mm-hmm. a bunch of curves out of mdf glue them together shingle it boom yeah mdf Arch. outside does real well yeah shingles bro we'll be fine <laughs> shingles that's fine now, I'm assuming you Seal don't the you want the the walls to be open because you got the guys probably sneak out back to go to the. That's bathroom, how you right? get the breeze Pee for back. the breezeway. <laughs> it's nice there. It's a nice little shot of air through there. You get a little shot to the face of air. It's really nice. We're gonna keep the shot, light through, the really face. No. <laughs> shot through the face. No, we uh, we uh, I'm definitely not gonna put walls there. That would be a huge mistake. But um, I've got We're always put so, walls up. <laughs> walls everywhere well, i'm a i'm in a glass case of emotion <laughs> no the uh i'm doing i have all this redwood I, I taught a class down at one of the local sawmills for the, the laser that i taught us a la- how to use a laser class down at the sawmill and they gave as payment they gave me a bunch of yeah it was it was laser tag i'm really good <laughs> i'm a state pointer. champion I don't know if you, you guys, guys gotta wear these <laughs> things across yeah. your chest and <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it was a great class i crushed it no uh we, i taught this class and it's payment they gave me a ton of redwood timber like six by six timber and true two by six redwood as payment because i wanted to build a tractor shelter for my tractor so justin is going to be helping me with that that's actually probably going to be like a collaborative video with me and him so oh, wow. um really excited about that but i have some left over so I'm going to do like a timber frame arch thing over the top. So I think that'll just be a fun little video we'll do. Um, but uh, finished all the electrical in the in the other building. Finally, there was some light, a light for the outside I need to get done. And I, I needed a wire for where I needed to finish the, the wiring for where the current CNC is going to be going because the new CNC is going to be coming soon. So I had to run the wiring for that as well. So that's all done. Everything's ready to go for when the new CNC hits. Um, and then I ran another circuit cause I'm going to be putting another dust collector in there. So anyway, just getting some, just getting some odds and ends done. It's been really nice. And we're wrapping up some other orders. We're doing these, uh, 20 redwood, uh, cookie coffee tables for room and board right now. We were going to be shipping those out actually this week, but I got an email the week before Christmas. They're like, Hey, we're actually kind of had an issue with, uh, well, I don't want to go into it very much, but they're not in as big a hurry. So I don't need to ship until next week. Oh, so we just been kind of taking it easy with them and it's been oh, really nice. nice. So, yeah. So we're just kind of, I'm actually, the shop's closed on Monday, which is nice. We're all taking the day off on Monday, which is going to be sweet. I'm actually looking is forward that... to having a day off. Oh, wow. So like the New day, after day or the day after New Year's day after yeah. New Year's. Okay. So after New I asked all the guys today, I was like, you guys want to take them, take money off. They're like, yeah. I was like, cool. Me too. We're not working. So <laughs> we're yeah, cool so, boss, cool boss, so, Mike. So we, uh, yeah, with pay. Tomorrow, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, that. that's 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 not you're using happen. a sick no. day guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah i didn't realize but they do have pto apparently apparently i legally have to give that to them in california so <laughs> so that's fun um anyways uh, no but we're just kind of wrapping up a bunch of projects for, well we wrapped up a bunch of projects i don't know 
if I talked about it on the like surprise episode, but we delivered all those tables to that building in San Francisco. Yeah, I did. Talk yeah, about you did. That. We got all we got all those delivered. That was awesome well, like two experience. people listened to it. So talk about it again. Yeah. No one, and I was no one, one of listened. them. So, so exactly. Yeah, we uh, we that was fun. It was just really great wrapping up a bunch of these projects. So right now it's a bunch of uh, um, dialing in projects that I've been kind of like kicking the can down the road on because we've been so busy and now everyone's kind of like, Hey, we need to get these things going. <clears> so I landed a bunch of projects from like Monday of this week until today. We got a lot of projects. It's booked. It's booked out really far again, but none of them really start to the middle of January. So we have this really nice buffer phase where we're just kind of like working on stuff in the shop. Me and the guys, um, I got mosaic. You guys ever heard of mosaic? Uh, the yeah. software for making cabinets. Cabinets, yeah, right? Cabinet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've had that for a while and I never played with it. So I'm actually going to start playing with that next week because we're going to, I'm going to design some cabinets for the shop in that software <clears> to kind of get my feet wet <throat> with that program. So we're going to build some like uppers and some things like that for around the shop in there and then have the CNC downers. cut it all out just to have, yeah, some uppers, some downers, some roofies, some floories, some middlers. We'll see what happens. <laughs> some, <laughs> <laughs> some whisker do's, whisker don'ts. Uh, <laughs> some archies so, uh, <laughs> um some pecan sandies that's a that's always in Philadelphia. Uh, anyway <laughs> um no so i'm gonna be playing tonight it's just kind of nice right now like just working on some projects i'm building some shadow boxes right now for some company out of new york uh for some retiring again stealing my business what <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> real this is a west coast guy at least i'm closer lane. yeah <laughs> and then We've been filming, just filming video. We're like, I'm really focused on the YouTube channel right now. I've, uh, and my cinematographer, Peter, he's, uh, we're both very excited about growing a YouTube channel right now. So we're both going to try to put the time in. Cause I mean, honestly, I really believe that like things don't happen unless you put the time into it. So, uh, we're really trying to put the time into YouTube and, uh, we're, we're trying to get a video out a week, which is really aggressive. It was more aggressive than we originally planned. We were going to do every two to three weeks, but we're finding that we're getting our, our groove, especially since Peter is a furniture maker uh, and he knows all the processes. We're able to just fly through stuff. Like we filmed two and a half videos today. We're going to film one and a half videos tomorrow. And we're going to have like a month of content done in two, like 16 hour days. How long are we'll these film. videos? How long are you uh, expecting these videos to be? Uh, the project video is probably about 15 minutes. Wow. Uh, the one jig Impressive. video is probably going to be about seven minutes. Um, the other video is a one minute video for Instagram. And then the other video is going to be about 10 minutes. Wow. So we're, 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 we're it's like, he doesn't mess around. He's been doing this for 20 years. Yeah, like yeah. I assume, I assume. Like Peter's really like, he's like, Hey, we need to do this right now. He's like, he's keeping the schedule going with it. It's amazing. Like he know, like I tell him the outline, like I write the outline for the video. He looks it over. He goes, okay, this is how we need to film it. And then he, cause he knows the processes with furniture. It's amazing. Like he, we get in there. It's we good to have it, someone then, that like, keeps you on track yeah yeah well, i mean like, you're right i'm just building like and like i don't like, even i'm just gotta, i'm yeah, blown like, away you gotta shoot these tonight yeah i'm blown away because i i love having isaiah in the shop and doing the filming and the editing and everything but he doesn't know woodworking quite as well as i do right. obviously uh, not that i know it well um so it, it takes longer to do all those processes and stuff because i have to explain to him what we're doing and i'm also we're doing it by the seat of my pants and I don't write down an outline, which maybe I should. That's a good idea. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I don't do that. We, when we do an outline, when I have the outline set, like I wrote a script. For, so <laughs> it depends on what we're doing. Like with the Redwood cookie video we did last week, there was no outline because he was, it was almost documentary style, like an Ishitani video where there's no, I wasn't having to do any, any on, there was no B, there's no like talking head so shots at all. <laughs> there's nothing. It's just him fill, following the process. And that video was like seven minutes. So um, it wasn't a long video, but like, this project video, every time I finish a process, we're doing, I'm doing like a point and talk, like right here, we're doing this. It's like for everything. So that video is going to just be longer. Um, that just is what it is. And like the jig video, it's super short because it's just a, like these jig videos are short, but we want to see how they do. Cause people always ask a lot of questions about you dig. So right. anyway, that's, that's what we're working on. We're just trying to figure out the channel. We're both really excited about it. We don't know what is going to hit. No one does. I mean, no one knows what works. No one knows how anything works. We're just trying to figure out the channel. So we're going in it. It's nice no to have a partner this. in this. Who cares? Okay, yeah, nice. it's just, it's cool. So focusing on that, trying to figure that out. Sorry, that was really super long-winded stuff. Sorry, but uh, how just, dare just, you? Uh, I know. Sorry, Pete. What's up with you, man? I oh oh, so I bought a truck. No, I sorry, I bought a truck. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I bought <laughs> a truck. It's literally gonna be like I bought an F250. 
You son of a bee. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. I'm so mad right now. The I was going to steal your uh, thing. <laughs> no, the company, the company needed a truck. And so the company got a truck. And luckily, I'm the company. So I got a truck. So. <laughs> <laughs> son of no, a I gun. Got, I, was, I was literally, my, my first thing was stealing truck. your thing. <laughs> I, got, I got the truck and it's it's really it's really nice to have a truck that can just do everything yeah, i need yeah. to do now because the truck you've given me the working. the new truck itch i've oh, been looking up, at Dan. New you had the coolest truck for like the whole time i know we but we knew you well i have small other things so now i gotta look at a big truck so <laughs> here we are well now at least you have a small thing but a nice truck so yeah well <laughs> anyway that, sorry go that on truck me. looks sweet that yeah looks it looks jealous. like a real nice truck i'm super jealous all it right is, well it's 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 actually like i i didn't not like my truck like I liked my no, truck. You, you my truck was a good truck. Well, it was a good truck, but it was really starting to struggle with what I needed. Like towing, you know, delivering 10 big thick tables was a bit of a struggle in San Francisco, you know, and like picking up, you know, from what I understand, that's material. a hilly place. It, yeah. It was just, and it's two and a half hours from, it was just not great experience, you know, and there's more and more of that happening. So, um, I'm not like a flashy dude with like vehicles and stuff like that, but it was, you got to really, you got those dirt bikes. Don't tell me yeah, that. You got the dirt bikes. <laughs> dirt you bikes. Got the, you got the brands of tractor. I mean, <laughs> tractors, sure. I mean, if you want to talk tractors, yeah, I'm a flashy guy. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was, uh, no, it was, uh, it feels, right, it's you nice you got to a get truck. a truck. Again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go. You go. stole my thing. Go. That was my entire yeah. what's on a bench is Mike got a truck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll be, I'll be quick because uh, we need to get in some questions. This is going to be a long episode because uh, Keith is such a good guest. He's just, mm. he's yes ending. I love yeah. this. Um, so I've been working on Etsy orders <laughs> this week, weirdly enough, was better for me than the last two. Really? Um, it's wow. really odd. Yeah. I'm getting, like are you a doing a sale or anything? No, absolutely. Did Ironically, get Etsy the gift time for I'm, yeah, right. The, the time I'm not running sales, <laughs> I'm doing better. I am actually, um, you know, like people say I'm like the Etsy guy. Cause I did some classes and I was, get, you know, was killing it for a while. Dan, by the way, blew past me on Etsy. But uh, this holiday season, I actually did a little less than I did last year. So it kind of sucked, but I did exponentially more in-person sales and, and you know, through Venmo, cash, That's whatever. That's great. So, so it kind of pivoted, but <clears throat> Etsy did not do as well as I hoped it would do. And I know why. It's because I didn't really add a lot of new items this year. I just kind of coasted on, on what I had. I added a few things. Um, and that's on me, even though I've been preaching this whole thing, like, hey, the holidays are coming up, start doing stuff for Etsy since June. Um, didn't do as amazing. Did Still did well, was able to buy a couple of tools, which is really nice. Hypocrite but, boy over here. Yeah, well, I'm a hypocrite, <laughs> exactly. But uh, this just goes to show you, you always got to be ABL, always got to be <laughs> listing on Etsy because um, if you're not, you're not going to be killing it. And Dan's always listing. I have. He's killing it. I currently yeah. have 97 active listings on it. That's wow. insane. Only five of them sell. <laughs> that's more than I had probably the last three weeks. <laughs> so that's yeah. That's we've really talked nice. about that in uh, length. I think uh, you know yeah. you just got to throw stuff at the gotta, wall and see what you sticks. You got to keep listing stuff exactly. <laughs> um, but what I'm still doing is I'm I'm still to this day even today I was cutting more ornaments. I'm still making more ornaments. So the holiday stuff is still happening. A lot of people still get stuff past the holiday season last year i was cutting ornaments as late as february because people were just like oh i would meant to give them some around christmas but uh, we were busy or whatever can you make more i'm like yeah why not so that's kind of nice you never know when this stuff is going to sell so i'm still making ornaments uh i'm working on a uh, kitchen island build with a friend of mine <clears throat> they got stock cabinets from a store but they're getting an oversized island top so they need supports on the sides to make it like a like a breakfast nook little bar top uh, so I'm building the supports for the side. The complicated thing is it, it needs to be built out quite a bit because they're actually running electrical through it. They want outlets and stuff on both sides. So working on that, I actually did this for them a couple of years ago in my old shop. And they're like, oh, we I just watched the uh, uh, House Hunters episode that you build out the, the size of the islands for. And I'm like, wait, that was on House Hunters? What? So apparently something I built was on TV, I feel very special yay uh mm, never translated to, it translated for to 10 of followers uh that was great <laughs> lost um, or gained <laughs> we're not gonna talk about that probably lost <laughs> like, oh that's no 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 this guy's out the other thing i did and you know we we sometimes talk money taxes and things like that obviously this is not the place to get advice for that 
but we met with our accountant last week and it's we basically do it like an end of the year meeting uh where he tells me but to it's buy more stuff m-e-a-t meet yeah <laughs> he needed us but the nice thing is he you know every year especially now that i officially have an llc uh it was a really good conversation of like here's what you could be doing this year what you could still do this year you know maybe you want to expense this or buy this uh this is what your bill or refunds looking like for next year so we in december know what our refund or bill is going to be like for the the next year so we can kind of plan ahead uh so then when we get our taxes done in january february whenever we get all our paperwork we're we know exactly what's happening and we can predict ahead and actually make that look a little better for us so highly recommend doing that if you have an accountant uh the nice thing was basically he told us to you know we could spend a little more money i could spend a little more money as the as the llc um and we're figuring out more ways to have the business pay because like obviously i'm not doing this full time as we actually have a question about that uh but we're figuring out more ways where the llc is paying for our life and things that we use all, already car maintenance miles when i do stuff for the shop and projects that i'm building you know doing content around i could actually expense so again highly recommend getting an accountant that's all i'm gonna say uh and then the last thing is this is kind of a what's on my bench slash something we missed during the uh, first part of the podcast, Mike. Uh, we're planning out our workbench con trip because we are driving down. Uh, so we're hitting up a couple of spots. We're actually going to be in Nashville visiting uh, our friends, Bethany and Brett. And then we're going to be heading up. Uh, uh, what's the state with the, all the craziness? Alabama. Florida. We're going to Alabama. Oh. <laughs> Our friends have an Airbnb. It's an old, uh, it's a bus that they converted into. Really? A bus. It's old, but it's a bus that they converted into a two-story, like, uh, tiny house, basically. So we're gonna be staying there for two days, and then we're gonna be going to WorkbenchCon. And if you want to join us at WorkbenchCon, you can use the code Shop AWP Podcast. For fifth, oh. Shut your oh. face. <laughs> mute this guy. All right, fifty-seven zero. <laughs> Use code AWP to get $50 off of your ticket. It's not too late to get a ticket. You definitely want to get it. We're all going to be there. Yep. Um, and that's about it. Sorry, Mike, I kind of shoehorned that in there because we missed it in the beginning. You don't need to say sorry. But AWP, I don't apologize, but Take thank you for your patience. Anyways, uh, that's my week. All right, on to questions now <laughs> that it's super uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> uh, the first question is from Braden, Dan's guy. Hey guys, it's Braden from Little Bug Woodworking, and I have a throwback question because I've been listening to a lot of your first episodes uh, this past week while I've been working in the shop. And so in episode two, you were asked and answered what your four most important tools in your shop were. And just so you don't have to remember from two years ago, it went, Mike uh, said the table saw, the jointer, the planer, and the bandsaw. Dan, you said the table saw, planer, bandsaw, and your Festool Domino. And Pete, uh, you said the drill and driver combo, table saw, bandsaw, and drum sander. So my question for you this week is, uh, in the last two years, I'm guessing that your businesses have changed and grown and new tools have come into play. Um, so do you stand by your answers from two years ago or, uh, if not, what would be your, your new updated four most important tools in your shop? Also, Keith, I'd be interested in hearing what your top four most important tools are in your shop. Thanks guys. Have a great night. Pete, four most important tools in your shop. <clears throat> and why are they all 3d printers? <laughs> uh, sorry i was muted uh i just i i'd say that's not a wrong answer it's something that literally right. works for me it's my employees um but kind of on that topic one of my new tools is now my laser my laser has brought me more business since i got it than than my last laser did for the last two years <laughs> so it it's definitely it I love automation. I love, you know, we we're talking in the beginning about production stuff and some people like it, some people don't. I find that if you have a machine working production work for you and you have to just kind of do the cleanup and, you know, clean it, sand it, whatever, package it, send it out. Uh, that's a lot more enjoyable because that's earning you money while you're not working. It's an employee that you don't have to 
you have pay, I guess you just buy them and maintain them and that's it. I mean, it's nice. They don't have a PTO, Mike. <laughs> so <laughs> I am not going to get on board here with them no, being good employees. <laughs> um, I have great employees. <laughs> of course, but the laser really, and like, you know, on the same topic, 3D printers, some, for some people it's CNC's, like it's, empl- it's machines that cut out as much of your physical labor as possible. And I think that- Cut you know, it out. Cut it out, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. So <laughs> CNC's, lasers, 3D printers, um, crickets, whatever, like those vinyl cutters, machines oh. that remove you as much as possible out of the equation. Yeah. They just run all day. One. They run all day. So what are just, your top four? So that's my one, is automated <laughs> machines. <laughs> Machines that work without you, because I think they're they're helping people scale their businesses to the next level, and it is for me. Uh, my other ones is going to be I'm going to go big table saw, joiner, and dang that miter saw that I finally got the capex, and now I like I use my miter saw for everything, every other cut that I can make jointing. Fits, yeah, I joint everything, <laughs> everything. I have a miter saw inches. jointing sled. <laughs> I set it to the same height and I run hey, everything through it. <laughs> anything under 13 inches, it can join like yeah. money. It's great. No, but I, I use that uh, miter saw. I've used it more since I got it than I have my previous saw probably the last year and a half. So uh, I'd say those those are my choices, the big ones, because I really do use them a lot. Uh, what about you, Keith? What are your four big tools that you can't live without? Yeah, I am not that much different. Definitely table saw and jointer and i feel like the last few projects the most important was the shaper origin um because i would not have been able to do my inlay on my tambor cabinet without it that I mean, tambor I made... cabinet was beautiful by oh, the way thank so you. cool thanks God. i mean i could make templates without it but like on this recent shuffleboard table like engraving all the letters i mean numbers and lines and the logo in this shuffleboard, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do that without that machine, but I don't have it anymore. So, um, what? it was a loaner from Doresta. Um, okay. I mean, I will be getting another one. Like I can't not have it. Um, but I don't have it now. So I would have to be, it would have to be the domino that, that tool like really changed. I, I do believe that is a game changer. If you're building furniture, um, 100%. it just, I mean, I can do mortise and tenon, but Jesus, why? I mean, it's just so right. much faster. And now I got the mm-hmm. I got the big one. I got the XL, which I needed on the shuffleboard table. Grilling and I fingers. put off getting that one forever because I just didn't need it. But after using it in those bigger dominoes, it just makes it that much better, that much stronger. Um, Same. So that's those are the one. And, you know, I just want to add on to this, like accessories, not power tools, but the two biggest things I use in my shop – that are accessories are my little woodpecker's hook rule that Pete has seen me pull out of my every pocket in my pants when I'm over he there. He pulled out so many times when he was here. <laughs> I have them in metric the ruler. and um, and imperial. <clears throat> and it does. I don't care what brand you use, but I use the woodpecker's ones. It doesn't matter. The setup blocks that come in every increment, whether it's metric or imperial. I use those for all my layout because it is – Rather than pulling out a tape measure and trying to mark off 1330, like grab a setup I've block. I've never seen anyone use – like set up blocks as much as you do you just got a new set everything yeah i just got an an additional set yeah i've been i got a set not too long ago and i'm using it all the time they're great to have it's feel it gives you a little level of confidence for some reason i don't know i just really like i'm using them more and more too they're great it's just so much easier than trying to read a tape measure and you get that parallax error when you're looking at the 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 tape because it's curved and like was that really that and you know i do really need to be that fine or that detail with your measurements kind of Sometimes you do. I got to find ones that aren't in red. Just put it that oh, way. Oh, yeah. They, they have blue ones. <laughs> there's some good ones for and, good. Pr- yeah, there's good ones for good prices. And even Rockler, you know, the bad thing about most setup blocks is if you get a, I don't know, let's say a three quarter inch, it's only three quarter inch in one dimension. The other dimension is normally half inch. But Rockler sells brass bars and whatever dimension you pick, it's that way all the way around. So no matter, because it's easy sometimes so to flip it on up. the wrong edge. Yeah. So, but for set up blocks for dummies, <laughs> right? <laughs> Speaking my book. language, Keith, <laughs> just for you, Dan. Whoa, oh. <laughs> <laughs> slow blow, Dan. What are your uh, top four? Uh, I, mine has changed quite a bit. I forget, I forget what I said. I know Braden said 
what mine was, but I know mine has changed quite a bit because number one currently has to be my CNC. That thing is driving my business right now. It is fueling the fire that makes this machine go. Um, second is going to be the bandsaw. The yes, of course. <laughs> the fire pit that I have outside my shop keeps the warmth in my shop. <laughs> Something. Uh, my bandsaw is going to be number two because I do a lot of resawing now because of the way I have everything set up. Uh, number three is going to be the table saw. I think the table saw is going to be on everybody's list. It's, if yeah. it's not, there's something weird here. Uh, and number four has to be my drum sander. And quite frankly, mm -hmm. I think number three and number four could be interchanged. I think the drum sander could be number three or even number two. I use the drum sander a ton because that helps me get everything. So I do a lot of inserts like we've been talking about. And every insert has a different thickness. And I've done a lot of market research to figure out what thicknesses I need. So I cut it on the CNC, then I take it over to the bandsaw and resaw it to get it to fall out. And then I take it over to the drum sander and get it that fine thickness. I, I thickness it finely with the drum sander to get it the exact uh, thickness that I need. So that has been uh, in instrumental in my uh, new uh, workflow. So, Which drum sander do you have, Dan? I have the Supermax 2550. Quite 25. frankly, I think this year, I'm going to I'm going to do two big purchases this year for sure. I'm going to get another CNC. I don't know which one yet. I haven't thought about it yet, but I know I'm getting a second CNC. And I'm definitely probably more than likely going to get that bigger Laguna uh, drum sander that what do they call it? The Big Bertha? Yeah, but you apparently have that one, right, I found Mike? out the that 37, comes in two well, that's sizes. what Jeff calls it. There's a 25 and there's a 37. Yeah, yeah I have a 37. 30, I have a 37. I yeah, I'm going to get that too, I think. I'm just going to have why to rearrange my shop a little like, bit. Seriously, why are you going to do that? Can I ask? So I can do more at a time. 50. Oh, is that what it is now? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because okay, I'm, I'm matching them out like, you know, 10, 15 at a time. And if I can just kind of do them all at once instead I, of. I didn't think about, yeah, multiples. Yeah. That makes a lot. Of, I was thinking like small bow tie. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, are you, anyway. So are you like <clears throat> running them? Are you? you're you're leaving them in the piece of wood and then you're drum sawing or you're drum sanding them out so i'm leaving them in the piece of wood so basically i get everything rough sawn now so i do take it to the joiner the joiner is actually instrumental in my my processes too um <clears throat> take it to the the jointer flatten out a face take it to the drum sander flatten the other face to get a nice flat on both sides take it to the cnc cut it out take it to the bandsaw resaw it, have it fall out, take it to the drum sander, get it down to the thickness that uh, I need. So like the- Oh, I see. The bandsaw, I'll cut it out, I'll go over by like a 16th of an inch or a 32nd of an inch. Is there a and reason why take you don't it... just sell them that, that thicker thickness? Because <clears throat> I want them to be perfect for my clients so they don't have to deal with anything. That's one of the things, one of the selling points of, of mine, I guess. Gotcha. I don't, I don't know how everybody else deeper? does it. Huh? Save you some time? Couldn't they just make the pocket deeper and save you some time? Who's making the pocket deeper? Your client. You're not selling them a, po a pocketed mortise. You're selling them a bow tie to fill it in, right? Where I'm not talking bow ties. I'm talking inserts. Zero I'm so sorry, inserts. Dan. I was thinking bow ties. I apologize. I dis <laughs> disregard. Yes, I apologize. Sorry. I was very confused. I was obviously very confused. My <laughs> wow, bad. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude. It's yeah. Custom thickness. This, <laughs> dude, I'm doing... eggnog is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... I was like, yeah, man, at the beginning of the year, using his bow ties to a thickness. I was like, what the heck? Okay. I've only had my CN, I've only had my CNC this year, right? Since May or April. That's when you guys, were you guys here this past year or was, was it the year last before? Last year, Daniel. That was 2020. It's been One. almost two okay. years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I only started doing inserts. Wow. I only started doing inserts around April or May this year. And they've slowly, they, they've <clears> taken over bow ties. Like, Bow ties are probably 20% of what I do now. Look at you, the insert king of Sarpy County. I'm going for <laughs> insert king of we, the we world. We are the on Midwest. the first question. We need to move. <laughs> I just oh, realized yeah, yeah. that. Oh, my God. Keith's going to fall asleep. So I'll answer I real quick. I get paid by the hour. I'm good. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I, as much as I hate to say it, the fact is the CNC is a big part of my business. Um. I would say the jointer. Well, shoot, I can only. Well, I'll say jointer, 
planar table saw CNC right now. I mean, it sucks to not include the domino because it gets used all the time. Uh, the lamello is getting used more these days. Uh, there's so many tools that we're using so more. Yeah, the marshmallow. There's so many tools <laughs> that are getting used so often. It's just, it's really hard because we do so many different things. So it's really tough. Like we aren't doing one type of stuff anymore. And so it's really hard. So I, if I had to pick four, I'd say those four. Uh, the next question is from Daniel Taylor. All right, listen, I upheld my part of the deal by calling in every week. It's not my fault that you all decide to say you're not going to do an episode and then turn around and do an episode secretively. <laughs> so anyways, I see you've made up for that by getting Keith on the show. Hi, KJ. I'm kind of fangirling <laughs> over here. Anyways, it's Daniel Taylor Custom Crafted. So here's my question. Since 75% of you, that's three out of the four of you for the math guy in the corner, are full-time woodworkers, makers, whatever you want to title it as, um, are doing what I hope to do someday soon. What is the biggest piece of advice that you can give someone? Like the number one thing that they need to make sure they've got in line, squared away, to, to be as successful as possible. That's all I got. I guess I'll just take a nap. Thanks, Daniel. I this, is the first try. <laughs> this is, I mean, preface with it's the most accurate thing that is going to be said is what Keith said earlier is no one knows your market. No one knows what you're making. No one knows what you're doing. Hard to answer. With that being said, Keith, what's your answer? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, and it, it ties back to what we said before as well is about having multiple streams of revenue. If, mm -hmm. if you're only stream as building furniture that's going to be tough most of the time because there's going to be ebbs and flows and it, can you live without having a commission for a month or like screwing up a project and having to fund the whole thing to build it again you know because mm -hmm. that stuff happens too i've had it where i've screwed something up big and basically got to start over and buy all those materials again and i'm not using cheap materials so you got to be able to eat the cost of your mistakes um but I think there's no good, no, you're never fully prepared to just be like, okay, today's the day where I'm all going right. to end what I was doing before and start because, you know, unless even people who have like backlogs of stuff, like that goes away quickly when all of a sudden you're doing it full time, because as, as when you're on your own business, you're, you're the vice president of production, you're the marketing, you're, you're you're doing the pricing, the estimate, you're going to pick up materials, you're doing everything and you got to, and it's very difficult to monetize isn't the right word, but um, factor in all those costs. Like people don't understand, like when, when you give them a price or something, well, why is it that much? Okay. Number one, I got to go to the lumber yard. I'm handpicking all your lumber and then bringing it home. That's four, that's a half day. That's four hours right there. And then I have to mill it all the first pass. That's another half day. So already we're at eight hours and I haven't even started building anything never mind the upfront time the 10 emails back and forth the design time and all these things like it's it's unless you have a high paying client it's difficult to add those things into the cost but when you start breaking everything down to people like oh okay i understand kind of why it costs so much but i'm not paying that and then you wasted all this time mm -hmm. and you got nothing out of it so a good a rule of thumb is like right from the get-go get know your customers expectations What's your budget is the biggest thing I ask people right away. And normally it's like, oh, I don't know. I was thinking somewhere between one and 2000. And then I quickly, I shoot them an email like right away. Here's materials. Here's what we're going to do. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I can't even get near that price for even materials. And they're like, okay. And then we move on. Otherwise you don't waste time up front trying to romance these people when ultimately they don't have the money. And if they, right. if they try to nickel and dime you, like, oh, is there a material we can use that's cheaper? No. Honestly, mm. the cost, like, you know, if you're using pine versus walnut, yes. But, like, walnut versus white oak versus ash, like, it's all pretty much the same. It's but then you got to factor in the time that it takes to get the pine to look <clears throat> like the walnut, right? Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, finish work. <laughs> exactly. When you're using walnut and you're just putting Rubio on it, it goes a lot faster than trying to stain something, sending out samples, getting that back and preconditioning or whatever the hell you have to do to that garbage wood. And uh, there's so many factors to, to I mean, Mike, you guys know this when you're when you're building furniture. Unless you have 
a set product that you always build. You know how long it takes. You know how much the materials cost. If you're building one of a kind, unique studio pieces every time, it's really a gut feeling. When people ask, how do you price stuff? It's, and I'll plug this because this is where I normally start is the made for profit pricing sheet. It's like $19 or whatever. And it's a fantastic spreadsheet. You plug in your materials and your <clears throat> hardware and all these things and factor in labor and how much margin you want to make. And it breaks it all down for you. It's fantastic. And that's normally my starting point for a price. And that's what I'll give the customers like a ballpark. And if that's in their budget, then we continue the conversation. If it's not- Pete, link my pricing guide, not Brad's. Thanks. <clears throat> oh, I didn't know you had one. <laughs> <laughs> like your audio is cutting out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why was there 20 seconds of silence there in Keith's audio? I have an affiliate link for Brad. <laughs> <laughs> so I know I kind of went off-road there on that question, but- No, that's a great well, answer. That's a great answer. Elsa's quiet because I have one. nothing to say. Because I want full-time. Pete to go. Daniel. Oh. No, okay, I'm fine. mad at I'll Daniel. Go. And he knows what he did. We talked about this. I'm sorry. Yes. I'm sorry. Dan, Dan, can I? I would love to hear your input. I'm going to go a, a slightly different direction. Uh, if you go back a few episodes when we had Johnny Lambert, Johnny Builds on, he actually gave a very good piece of advice. Uh, somebody, somebody called in and had somewhat similar of a question. And he was talking about how uh, he had a conversation with Ben Ueda. And Ben Ueda convinced him to not go full time, to utilize his job and set himself up to get where he wants to be and understand the processes and and just kind of make the transition easier. I I implore you to go back and re-listen to that conversation we had with Johnny because he dropped some really answer. good knowledge about that. And I thought it was brilliant. And that's my short and sweet answer. Pete, do you really want to add anything to this? <laughs> I want to add that this is coming from the guy that wants to start working somewhere just so he can quit again because he misses the feeling. Of quitting? Yeah, Dan Dan oh. was told to me like he wants to just start working again somewhere just so you can go like screw this, I quit. Oh yeah, that's a fun time. <laughs> Taco this Johns, baby. Taco Johns. Johns. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with all that. I, that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm going full like I'm I'm not going full time. It's like I really I really like my job and I'm just trying to find that's a way important. to slowly and carefully yeah. replace my income. But I'm not. Yeah. And really, I, I know that dream is out right there now. that, you know, people that do this woodworking thing as a side hustle, they look at guys that do it full time and they're like, they oh my the gosh, that's the, that's the dream. And, you know, you got you to understand that on social media, you're seeing the highlight reel. You're not seeing yeah. the struggles, the everyday struggles. And I mean, it's not as easy as it looks. <clears throat> We're, I'm not trying to talk you out of it, Daniel, but I want you to understand that it's a it's a huge leap and a huge risk. And if you have a family that depends on you, what you're getting yourself into so just be ready as you can be before you make that leap that's why i'm saying go back and listen to the johnny episode because he did drop some good knowledge about preparing yourself for it listen listen you hear these things and people talk about things and you just, you're just hearing about it you don't understand how stressful these things are i run my business and it is so stressful i mean i have a twitch in my eye from the stress <laughs> It does. I really, like literally I have a twitch in my eye from the stress and it's a lot. It's a lot to do. Like, I mean, these big wins are big wins They're They feel really good, but there's a <clears> lot <throat> at risk. I have a lot at risk when I do these things, when I take these big wins. And when I take on a big contract like that, that means I'm now locked out of taking on the work that I actually really like doing. Like when I have these big production jobs, like I really like to do the one-off stuff. Here's the bottom line. There isn't good money in furniture business if on a custom one-off business. There just isn't. It's what Keith was saying. I am. Let me pull up this email right now. I'm not going to read the email. Let me tell you how many emails in I'm on this job. This guy and his wife and I have 27 emails oh, on a $7,000 table. So just uh, average five minutes read, per email. That's probably being I super could, liberal. I could, I'm probably going to get this job. And we're going to be able to make it quickly because we've made this table. I have all the templates done. I've made this table four times now. It's a farmhouse style table. I've made it four times now. So this is kind of one of those exceptions to the rule. We're like, okay, we can make this one quickly. We know it. We have all the processes down. We have the base model design. Everything's done and ready to go. But still 27 emails is a lot. And $7,000 might sound like a lot of money, but that's how much I pay every two weeks in payroll. So mm -hmm. I have to land at least 
four of those jobs a month just to pay myself a salary. So -hmm. these things get really stressful. Like it's a lot of money. Like you start thinking like, oh, Mike's making all this money. Well, it's like, yeah, but Mike's also spending a ton of money just to operate his business. So there's all these things that you don't really, when I make, when I make money on a project, I'm not just making money on the project. I'm also having to spend all this other money just to be able to have a business. And as the business gets bigger, like as the business gets bigger, it gets more and more expensive. I have more operating costs. My hourly Mm -hmm. shop rate keeps having to go up. And because my hourly shop rate keeps having to go up, less and less people want to pay me to do projects for them. So I have to be Mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, it really sounds great to have this other big building, but to be able to afford this other big building, I have to again raise my shop rate. And eventually I'm going to price myself out of the furniture market. And you start to get in this situation where you're like, okay, should I just do cap? Should I just do kitchens? Because everyone's Mm going to buy kitchens. You can sell a kitchen cabinet, like cabinets and built-ins and stuff. They'll just always keep selling. Like the one-off furniture is all I want to do. Then I'm like, okay, if I have a facility that big, do I just find a guy, bring, hire some guy who knows cabinets and hire him and bring him in and do that all the time? I'll have the CNCs for it. We can do it. Let's do it. I'll have a spray booth. So (coughs) I start to have to like, look at all these different options. And who's asking this question? Daniel. Daniel, it's a lot. It's just right. a lot. And on paper, furniture businesses just don't make a lot of money. They just don't. Right. You need to have a lot of passion there. And as Keith said, and it's iterated, and you're going to hear all the time, you have to have multiple streams of revenue. My content, my my brand relationships, the things that I have have helped in mm-hmm. different ways. I get money from them. I get money from affiliates. And I get, you know, some of my, my overhead costs are negated by the fact that sometimes I get some expensive tools for free, but I have to do work for them to get them. And to get paid, you know, it's, uh, I'm doing this other work. I'm not just doing a furniture business. I'm also today we spent, I'm going to spend all of today and all of tomorrow filming content Mm -hmm. to make money. Also, you're listening to a podcast right now that in theory, we've monetized in a way that helps us make money. Really, honestly, we'll all be really straight with you. The podcast doesn't make as much money as we all hoped and dreamed that it would one day. It just doesn't like we'd like to, but but we love doing it. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice thing to have, but some weeks when it's really stressful and things are hard, and I've got things that are making me a lot of money, and this, you know what I mean. I don't want to stop the podcast. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it makes it puts a strain on your life when you're like, oh, I do need to pay the mortgage this month. Uh, I do need to get this product or this project done, but now I got to go spend four hours doing a a podcast or another. Let's not say the podcast, another any other activity that takes away from your ability to make money. So then you start thinking about how you're going to make money all the time, and that becomes your life. So you need to really understand that like when you work for yourself, there's a lot of these other things that no one really talks about in social media. Mm -hmm. I mean, they will when the question is asked, but that's not what people watch on social media. People watch the sexy highlight shots, the sexy Mm -hmm. reels, the quick stuff that's neat, the interesting stuff. No one wants to hear me sit or no one wants to hear Keith sit and talk about his half to full day trip to the lumberyard picking out the straight clear walnut to make this table i do no one cares <laughs> i listen to shop one of the things for that. <laughs> just one of the i mean another downer here is like when you especially when your your business is working with your hands and physical labor if you get hurt then what like yeah, yeah. you know it's i get you. a bad back i That's see it. a chiropractor and a and a physical therapist twice a week each and, and an acupuncturist. I, I, I've tried that. It did not work, actually. Oh. Um, but Come that's, over here. I'll poke you for Physical free. therapy is three <laughs> uh, three hours out of the shop. <laughs> Sorry. You're such a nice guy. Such I a sweet just, kid. What are friends for? Oh. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of time out of the shop. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm physically able to still work. But if it was something worse than that, like, you know, a table saw injury, or I slipped and like really hurt myself and you can't work for six weeks or you can't do anything. Like these are things uh, I think about that stuff all the time. Like if I couldn't work in the shop, I still always have editing to do. There's always something that needs to be edited. I could <clears throat> still do content for a while, but you know, I, I don't have kids, so <clears throat> I don't have to dedicate time to that. But like Mike was saying, like the last few months for me have been insane i never usually this busy but i've been like 16 hour plus days for 60 or 70 days straight and if Mm -hmm. i had a family i don't know how i would do that like i I wouldn't have any time for my children at all as it is i you know i don't have barely got time for for your cats barely they're so needy (laughs) so it there's just so much and you know mike is exactly right with the, the stress and like he has to that's the other thing for him he has to find enough work to support two other people 
Not, three. not necessarily. I hired another oh, sorry, guy three. like an idiot. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's no, on you. Know. I know. So he's, you know, he's that <clears throat> freaking guy from the Dr. <laughs> Seuss playing the drums and the, that whole instrument, whatever the hell it's called, like balancing plates like a hundred at a time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, maybe that's it. Yeah, cat in the hat. <laughs> so, and I'm just like one person doing one piece of furniture at a time, <clears throat> and one video at a time. So, okay. It, instead of instead of all these downer comments, let but me. But the add good that. things are. Let me tell you the good things. Yeah. The good <laughs> things are. I am at home all the time. I can walk out of my shop. I'm there. I can come in, grab a drink, go out. I like, I don't have to commute anywhere. Drive into the office. I don't have to answer to anybody. I mean. That's not true. Like people say you're your own boss, but the problem, the thing is your boss is your clients or your clients are your boss. Yeah, right. Like, you're still answering to some, I'm answering to sponsors. I'm answering to, um, comp or, you know, my agent who's getting ad spots for me and I'm answering to clients all the time. So you're still answering to people being your own boss. You're just a different type of. Yeah. If you're <clears> taking <throat> money from someone, that. you're answering to them. Hmm, bottom line. Yeah. I just want to say this then we can go on with all that said <clears throat> sorry i'm i'm going to i'm on the verge of coughing no 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 i'm sorry <laughs> <Not now. laughs> i have i have ebola or something um if only. i've i've worked for myself since 2011 i'm coming up on 12 years here wow. uh, i will never work for somebody else another day i will not same do it. The worst days of working for myself are still better than the best days of working for somebody else. Even with all the stresses, I will take it 10 times out of 10. So yeah, I it. disagree with that for me, because sometimes right, I just, I everyone. like to be tasked like, here, you do this. Okay. And rather than having to be the one, sometimes I have a hard time motivating myself and getting going despite the fact that it's my business. But uh, <laughs> like when you work for someone, you don't have a choice. It's like you work or you're, you're fired. Um, but if I had to choose, I would still, like Dan, be working for myself like this. That's not to say I won't eventually go back to an office job. I don't know. Who knows? I may, get, I may hate woodworking in a year. I doubt it. <laughs> You'll love it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Knitting. That's true. <laughs> uh... That was a lot of answers that sounded like we hate this, but we actually love this. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. well, we we it. really kind of man like pitching the bad part of it. It's a lot. No, I mean, what? it's great. It, it's tough. I well, mean, it's it hard a lot stuff. to think about. I think it still gives. Yeah, yeah people need to know it's not positives. all rainbows and puppies over here. No, you, you know? can't. Yeah. It's not fair. Like, I think that a lot of people do think, "Oh, I'm gonna do this thing, and it's so great." And it's like, yeah, it, it is great. There's all these great things, but but you're fully it, empowered to make a change. Hard, like it's hard to rely on a company. And I, I do well, not agree with that statement. If you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. No, that's whatever. No. Shit because yeah, it is. it's all I work harder work. than I ever have. Yeah, it is work. I've never worked this hard or had this much stress in my life. It's my stress and it's my work, which I love mm -hmm. more than someone else's stress or someone else's work, but it's more than I've ever worked. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I get up at 545. I run to one of Keith's videos. I go right out to the shop <laughs> and I'm out there till six and then I have dinner and then I put you my run son for to bed, 45 and then minutes. I, I run for 30 to 45 <laughs> minutes every day. And then I, I go out to the shop for like 16 hours and then I come in and have dinner and then I go in there for like four more hours. It's insane. Yeah, it's an incredible yeah. amount of time you have to put into your, your business for it to actually work. If you want to actually make it work, you have to put a lot of time in. <clears throat> Anyway, yeah. uh, we only have nine more questions, so let's keep going here. Um, <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I believe most we of them have, are uh, for just Keith. Yeah, oh, let's gosh. just these All are right, just for I'm Keith. Gonna, so let's go. Oh, just speed run, rapid fire. Yeah, speed run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> no. Green. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Pork pie. Hey guys, so it's official. I pulled the trigger on the one Finity woodworker. I wanted the journeyman, but just didn't have quite enough space, unfortunately. However, I'm excited to be one of the not real woodworkers this is not for keith <laughs> yay um so anyways so my question is being a novice newbie somebody that has never done cnc work what advice would you give me or anybody for that matter who is just starting off in this world uh what bits would you suggest <laughs> getting um i guess just what would you first what would you do first what is the very first thing you would cut i guess for just learning uh, yeah, just looking for overall advice from guys who actually have had it 
and are doing well with it. So uh, looking forward to the answers as always. Let's thanks, go guys. quick. I'll go first. Quarter inch end mill down cut, get one. Quarter inch compression end mill, get one for sheet goods and for cutting through holes. Uh, it He got a journeyman, he said, or a wood, uh, woodworker, woodworker, the smaller one. one woodworker. Yep. Can you put the spindle, bigger spindle on there? Yeah. Yes, you can. Get a bigger spindle. Make it so you can cut three eighths bits and half inch bits uh, because they will change your life. Uh, you can run a half inch bit can get so much stuff done compared to a quarter inch bit. It is unbelievable. It's not twice as fast. I believe the math is six times as fast. It's wow. about step overs and stuff like that. So um, it's very fast. It makes a huge difference. So with that being said, I the bits I use the absolute most are my, my slab flattening bit, uh, a quarter inch down cut, quarter inch compression, three eighths down cut, a half inch down cut. And uh, those are actually my top five. And then there's some V bits in there, but those are all specialty <clears throat> stuff. But end mills are where it's at. Quarter inch <clears throat> end mill is going to be your workhorse a lot of the time. Oh, and an eighth inch end mill down cut. Yeah. Um, Dan. Quick and easy. Get an Amana uh, CNC starter bit set Great. and go from there. Perfect. You never yeah, know what you're going to need until you get into cutting what you're cutting. You might not cut the same things as Mike. You might not cut the same things as me. Get a starter kit. Go from there, figure out what you need. Uh, first thing to cut, maybe a simple sign, simple tray. Just get used to it. Just make practice cuts, do things for friends and family, and uh, just go from there. Explore and uh, experiment. Pete. Uh, yeah, so I agree with Mike. Get the spindle upgrade if you can, as quickly as possible, because that's just a great upgrade. Uh, if you ordered it with the regular mount, just see if you can change your order to the 80 millimeter spindle mount right out of the gate. Don't even bother with the other one. Um, agree with most of the bits he said. The, for starters, definitely a quarter inch uh, down down cut compression, eighth inch uh, down cut bit. Get uh, two V bits. Uh, I would say to 30 degree, which is a super pointy one. Of nice fine letter work. It's nice to get some like signage uh, done and. Um, uh, I would say, I think it's a 60 degree. It's, or not, actually, honestly, even a 90. The 90 is solid. And uh, those, a lot of those come, the, the carbide tipped ones are really nice because you just swap out that blade. It just cuts so much better than just a straight metal one. Highly recommend that. Um, and um, that's kind of it. I, I think just get those those four or five bits. Oh, and get a flattening bit. You want to make sure that whatever, whatever wasteboard you put on there, flatten that thing. Get a flattening bit, even the, one of those cheap white side ones it's perfectly fine get a nice dead flat surface because if you're trying to do finite work and signage and lettering uh, a little bit of a difference in thickness and different parts of the cutting material is going to make a huge difference when you're actually looking at the piece so uh that's just my little water uh, water warning now dan did you go ahead? that's it yeah dan went let's go to the next one here yeah, this Keith just has like we're not gonna like Keith talk <laughs> he has a handheld cnc he has a he, Bit. Uh, you got some bit bit options for CNCs nope. there, Keith? Okay. Nope. Hey, Michael. Mike from Lido's Woodshop calling in. Oh, God. I'm wondering who's doing the intro tonight. Pete or Keith? Pretty uh, pretty epic toss-up right there. He knows this No, my question's for Keith. Um, <laughs> so with the murdering. Is that a Velocity way of coming up with the design for the template? And, like, what do you use to come up with your shapes and sizes for your templates? Do you have jigs? Do you have curvy things what do, you, what do you use to come up with your actual templates before you start cutting thanks again walnut wizard <laughs> keith how do you come up with your templates a lot of times i'll do it in sketchup or illustrator sketchup is i mean it, if i'm going right from sketchup into something it's tough with a curve because it does faceted edges you can change it to like a hundred but it still does it in segments so you kind of got to do it in illustrator there's new shaper studio <laughs> which i thought was going to be a game changer does the same damn thing which they know about, but it's annoying as hell. Um, and you can't do straight lines. You can't. No. Oh, I didn't even. You have know to that. do a rectangle with a zero height. It's, oh, okay. I was like, come on, guys. <laughs> with a zero height. <laughs> yeah, I was like, come uh, on. I was just trying to drop um, a bow tie and make a video for it, and I was like, oh, okay, never mind. Uh, oh crap. <laughs> um, but I also have love those like, guys. French... It's a great product. Board. Of course. Yeah, I know yeah. it's going to be refined. It's version one. It will right? be for sure. Um, a French curve and a bendable curve um, to try to draw out things. I, I do it on cardboard a lot to kind of get an idea of how my template's going to look. I love doing things full size. 
like when you're looking at a computer, it looks right. But then when you actually do it full size, you're like this looks completely wrong. So I always encourage full size templates first out of cardboard <clears throat> and then then digitally to either cut them out or you can use that cardboard to trace it out and then rough it out and use a drum sander. I mean, not drum sander, a freaking, what the heck are they called? Planer? The, no, the sander thing goes up and down. <laughs> A spindle spindle sander. sander. Yeah. Just smooth out the edges. <laughs> um wow. so it's that's like typically what I do. It really did. <laughs> uh, so, Any other questions, uh, Mike? Just DM me. Temp template tips, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> template tips with Keith. Uh the next question. <laughs> good luck, good luck understanding it. It's me. Hi. I'm the French. It's me. Hey guys. Hi, Keith. Isn't it funny that the owner of the Woodshop podcast have a pre-show and Shop Sun does an after-show? Maybe you could transform it together to make a mega show? Keith, I know you have a Melamelo and a Domino. If you had to choose only one of them, which one would you, would you keep and why? Thank you. Bye. This is the impossible uh, question to answer. Oh, first yeah. of all, Thomas, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yep. Uh, Keith. Obviously, so it, you're not going to be able to answer this. I can't feel like you'll be able to, but which one? <laughs> it's like bandsaw, um, table saw. They don't do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it. and when people ask me, what should I get, the Lamello Domino, and it all depends on what you build. If you build furniture, right. you want the Domino. If you build cabinetry, you want the Lamello. I typically build more <clears throat> furniture than I do cabinetry, so I would pick the Domino. Even though mm. I am a Lamello dealer, I would pick right. the Domino because I – but I, I incorporate the lamello. It doesn't detract from the value possible. of the lamello. No, absolutely no. not. Yeah. And I use it in furniture as well. But I, since I, the majority of stuff I do is furniture, then domino. Boom. Boom. Simple. Simple. Yeah, and then we've got these. Yeah, now we're moving quick, finally. <laughs> Hour and 40 minutes in, we started moving fast. Uh, got a tailwind and then, here. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> to be fair, then, we talked we, about your truck for 25 minutes. Uh, for, yeah, right. That's me. My bad. The next the next question is written in from uh from Mary Sai from Kodamari Designs. Uh hi, my question for Keith is the following. Hey Keith, hope you're doing well. I'm curious what prompted your decision to go to furniture school once you became a full-time woodworker. Additionally, what about going to school would make you recommend it over just watching YouTube videos to other woodworkers? Thanks. Yeah, Mary's right. Like after I lost my day job and I went full time, I went to I took a six week kind of furniture <clears throat> intensive class at Connecticut Valley School of Woodworking with Bob Van Dyke. And the reason I did that is because for so many years, gosh, forever since we talked, since I was in eighth grade, everything was self-taught, like watching other people, learning things myself, trying things. And I've always felt that I know how to get from A to B, but sometimes <clears throat> I take a really long way to get there rather than a straight line so going to these um schools that they teach you i don't want to say the right way to do things but a different way like probably the easier way to get from a to b and there i learned so many so many new techniques and jigs and <clears throat> also in these schools they teach you because listen i love tools you guys <clears throat> love tools i love the shiny new tools you don't need the majority of them and if you look at right. every old school woodworker, they just have like a wall full of jigs. They have an, a bandsaw that's 50 years old that they keep finely tuned, an old Delta um, Unisaw, because you don't need all this new fancy stuff, but they also don't make tools like they used to. But the point is they rely on their skills versus the tool, where I think a lot of people now rely on the tool rather than their skills. Um, yeah. So I wanted to go there and learn more about working with hand tools, sharpening, um, and, and, and better way, if I could become more efficient as a woodworker, like, am I doing something so completely wrong that like a light bulb goes off? Like, Oh, why have I been doing it that way? Like I should be doing it this way. It's so much easier. So there was also techniques on like finishing and different techniques on controlling squeeze out. Like there's so many things you can learn and little tips and techniques that you see in magazines, but you don't really process them in your brain until you actually do them or see it live in person and can ask a question like that's why taking i i, I cannot recommend taking an in-person class enough you can learn all you want on on youtube and instagram but 
you watch a video and then you go do it. You're like, wait, what did I watch? How did he do that? Mm. Whereas when you're in person and you run into a problem, someone is right there to fix it immediately and you keep moving. Whereas I just feel like it is money well spent. Like I think I think it was like two thousand dollars for a six week course. It was five days a week for wow. six weeks. That's wow. it was something Very extremely pricey. affordable. And like he had Mike, if you think Pekovich. of like college credits, that's not that expensive at all, right? And like he had Mike Pekovich from Fine <clears throat> Woodworking come in. Um, Mike Maselli who's like a furniture, he's a um, a finishing and upholstery master. So we had all these guest people come in. We learned how to do um, uh, what's the friggin' Chinese, the oh my, <laughs> blank Kumiko, Kumiko? Sorry. Kumiko. Yeah. Oh, how yeah. to do a Kumiko panel and and just and even like different clamping techniques, like a like a spring joint. So it's so valuable. And I wish I had taken classes earlier on. Like when I was looking at colleges and I was into word working then, but I had no idea schools like the North Bennett Street School in Boston and furniture, the Center for Furniture Craftsmanship in Maine. Like I had no idea these places even existed. But now, or Mark Adams School out in the Midwest, like anytime, oh, if you can take a oh, class, Mark Adams. go you know, take it. You you will get so much from that class than than you would from watching a YouTube video. Hundred percent. Yeah, that's something I want to do very badly. It's very high. I want to take some more classes one of those too. Intenses. Yeah. I want to do like a long intensive, very badly, very badly. It's really really important to me. Uh, one thing awesome. I miss about teaching because well, I would stick around for classes. I, I miss that. Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question, Mary. Yeah. Cool. Right on uh keith thank you so much that is the mm. end of the episode oh you know what i'm gonna read our top patrons, patrons appreciate that per pete's request and once uh, again make out. sure to uh use a code awp if you need workbench con tickets yes code we got a little AWP kickback for that. if you need workbench con tickets that'd be great if you could do that let us know how that goes uh alex <laughs> copa johns jacob miller jake conine Justin from uh, Calvary Customs, LLC, mm -hmm. Christian Tung, Michael Flickinger, Square Splinter, and Tim from Lock City Woodworks. Thank you, guys. You guys are amazing. Thank you for supporting the show. Uh, if you don't follow Keith on all the platforms that you can, you should. You're insane. He's great. He's a great guy. Uh, yeah. Check him out on YouTube. Check him out on Facebook. Check him out on Instagram. I think Facebook's probably what your main platform for. Well, it is now because they're paying the right? most. So, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> Check them out over there and then check out the TikTok over there. Are you still yeah, doing TikTok? Too. Yeah. Yeah, that one too. Yeah. So check Just, them out on all the too. things. Give them some love and go check them out on Shop Sounds. And uh, Shop Sounds is a great podcast that he does with uh, Jason Hips, Bourbon Moth, and Nick Key. And uh, go give that show some love for sure. Uh, we will be back next week. Don't know who the guest is. Figure that out this week. We'll let you guys know. Gonna through be great. <laughs> It's going to be great. It's going to be really good. I can be you're going to be stuck with the three of us. That's it. Right. I can be oh, a guest. Be I can play the part of a guest. I'd, I'd love to be a guest. Don't push it. Can, okay. Can you say measure correctly, and then we'll just say you're doing another character? <laughs> measure. That was a Ooh. test. You said it wrong. Where'd Dan go? Where's Dan? All right. Uh, <laughs> I don't care. We'll see you guys. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for joining us, and uh, have a great weekend. Love you all. Thanks bye for bye having bye. me, fellas. Bye-bye. Love you a long time. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye. <laughs>